Hello everyone. So just before we get into the actual video, I just wanted to jump in here to say that the day that I am posting this is going to be my one year booktube anniversary. And I just guess I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed, liked, commented on any of my videos. I have fallen in love with booktube and doing it. And yeah, it's been a really fun year and it's definitely helped through this situation in the world and yeah I'm so glad that I decided to finally do it last year. Please do not ever go back and watch my booktube movie tag. It is so embarrassing. Um so that is all. Uh thanks to anyone who is staying around I guess. Hello everyone welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be doing a book haul. So this book haul is every single book I got in the first half of the year. Usually I do it quarterly, but I bought like nearly zero books between January and March. So it would have been like a two book book haul. And then between April and June, I got like 17-ish books. Whoops. So the reason this kind of happened is because back in December we went into another lockdown. And for Christmas, I had gotten some book vouchers. And I didn't want to be spending my money on books when I knew that I had book vouchers there, but obviously all the bookstores were closed. So I had kind of just been waiting. In May, I finally got to go into a bookstore and I bought a couple books. And then my birthday happened in May, so I got more books. And then I had pre-ordered stuff and that arrived. And now I have 19 books to show you. I usually do these book hauls in the order of my purchases and I'm not 100% sure of some of the orders of which I purchased. So the first couple are kind of a guess. So I'm pretty sure the first book I bought in 2021 was Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare. This is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy which is a spin-off series to the Infernal Devices. It follows the next generation of Shadowhunters and of course in typical Shadowhunter fashion where demon attacks start happening and it's up to them to figure out what is happening. Yeah I have already read this one and I have a whole vlog for it. So then the next book, I'm not sure when I bought it, but I know I bought it pretty early on in the year. Actually, I think, thinking about it now, I think this actually might have been bought in like January or February, because I think my mom was making an Amazon order and she wanted free shipping, and so I got this. So I think this might have been January or February, so this is actually the first book I got this year. That is Fool's Errand by Robin Hobb. Again, this is another one that I have already read, and I gave it five stars. I love this. So this is a spin-off series, something, there's just something about spin-off series here today. This is a spin-off series to the Farseer trilogy by Rowan Hobb. It is a continuation that happens 15 years after the original trilogy. We are following Fitz as he is dragged back into life at Upkeep. And as I said, I five started this, this is my favourite book so far this year. And you may see the other books in a few minutes. So then the next two books I bought uh, on the same day, I bought them online. And so one of them is Sight Witch by Susan Dennard. I had all of the other books, but I had actually read this on ebook originally. And so I decided to buy a physical copy so I could have my little con collection because I love the Witchland series. And again, this is another one that was a five star. And once again, it does not match any of my Witchlands books, but honestly, I'm okay with that. And also in this order, um, was also I pre-ordered Witch Shadow by Susan Denner. Uh, anyway, yeah, I tapped this up and as I said, I really like this. This is a novella in the Witchland series. It is 2.5. It is vital that you read it before you read Blood Witch because a lot of it connects back to it. We follow a side character that we met in the first book called Fryber and she is a sight witch and we learn all about this other magic that we haven't learned anything about and we get a lot of lore, mythology and kind of world building that I think a lot of people will appreciate if they read it. So then the next book I bought, I also bought along with Sight Witch and pre-ordering Witch Shadow, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic. Yes, I already own this book. I own the whole series in the American paperbacks. I have ordered the Illumicrate, A Darker Shade of, well, A Gathering of Shadows and A Conjuring of Light. I missed out on the A Darker Shade of Magic box, which um, which I regret a lot. I only discovered Illumicrate after they sold those boxes and so I and then I just saw everyone unboxing these and I was like I want that so bad but obviously they weren't selling them anymore and I ordered the second and third book in the beautiful red editions and I do have the dust jackets. I ordered them 
off eBay. I actually got them cheaper than a lot of people were selling them for um because I'm good at hacking <laughs> and yeah I got this even though obviously it is not red and silver um just to put like the dust jacket on and just like to have the whole series in hardbacks um but if anyone watching owns the first one and is willing to sell it please sell it to me here's the dust jacket by the way it's the collector's edition one so the series follows Kel who is an Atari and that is a kind of blood magician who can travel through different Londons but he also has a bit of a side hustle of being a smuggler which is most certainly not allowed uh, but he does it anyway and then one day he accidentally smuggles the wrong thing and it causes a lot of trouble and he has to stop it with the help of a thief I actually only reread it earlier this month and I read this copy in the back of this there is actually like really short stories and there's one which is the first meeting of Ryan Kell and I may have almost cried so on to book number five and that is Real of Wolves by Lee Bardugo this is another one that I have actually read I gave it a three star but this is the second book in the Nikolai duology which it's not actually called the Nikolai duology anymore because it's not about Nikolai it's actually the King of Scars duology I wasn't the biggest fan of King of Scars I wasn't the biggest fan of the original Grisha trilogy um Secret Crows and Crooked Kingdom are the only ones that I really love but I read this anyway I wanted to finish the last book though there is supposedly a Six Crows 3 I'm not sure how I feel about that <laughs> but I can't really explain too much about this because it is a continuation of both other series and it is also the sequel to King of Scars. So it's just dealing with a lot of the fallout from King of Scars and yeah as I said it was a three star. This is not a wrap up so I don't know why I'm telling you all my ratings. So now we are into May and in May as I said bookstores finally open. So the next like three books were ones that I bought in bookstores. So the first one is Mr. Impossible by Maggie Steve Otter. I still haven't read this. Um, I mean, it's which is kind of weird to me because like I remember being so excited for Call Down the Hawk, like, and I like bought it as soon as I saw it. Which I mean, I did the same for this. Like, I bought it immediately, but like I read Call Down the Hawk immediately. But for this one, for some reason, it's not really calling to me. So hopefully, I will be more motivated to read it. This is the second book in the Dreamers trilogy, which is, again, a spin-off to The Raven Cycle. I love The Raven Cycle, it is one of my favourite series of all time, and I also did enjoy Call Down the Hawk. I can't really tell you too much about what the Dreamer trilogy is about, but it does follow Ronan, who we meet in The Raven Cycle. And in the original series, we are introduced to the concept of Dreamers, but the Dreamer trilogy obviously follows it much more in depth, and it also follows Ronan as well as other characters that we haven't met before. Next book, again, I bought this on the same day I bought Mr. Impossible, that is The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. I've never read a Marie Lu book, I've heard some great things and I've also heard some not so great things. Uh, in general, I think her books seem to have a very mixed opinion. Is She seems like an author that you either really love all of her stuff or you don't really like her stuff at all. This is not my usual thing because it is like historical fiction and like magical realism and I'm not really sure why I picked it up. Actually I do 100% know why I picked it up because Elliot Brooks just always says how much he loves it and I saw it. This cover is just absolutely stunning. This is one of my favourite covers ever. I think it's just beautiful. I have heard people say that this is just absolutely beautiful and then other people being like I just didn't get it. I might fall into that I don't get it but I want to give it a go anyway. In this we follow Mozart's sister who was actually a real person who was just as talented as Mozart but because she was a woman she never really got the chance to show that and then obviously there is the fictional side which is her and her brother had this magical world that they made together and it's like a question of whether it's real or not question mark book number eight that I bought this was like literally the day after I bought those two I went into another bookstore and spent more vouchers <laughs> and I bought the henna wars if you know anything about me you know this is not my usual thing but I've heard such great things about it and I follow the author on twitter and she just seems absolutely lovely I don't read a lot of YA contemporary but I mean a lot of YA contemporary I have read I have enjoyed 
why you contemporaries rarely get five stars for me but i've had like a load of four stars and yet every time i give one a four star i'm always surprised i'm like wow i didn't think i would like that and it's like you don't actually dislike why a contemporary you just think you do again i'm not 100 percent of the premise of this but i'm pretty sure it follows these two girls i think our main character is a lesbian but i don't think her family is very accepting and i think she is doing like I think in this book she's doing an enterprise thing uh, where she is running a henna business and then another girl in her school is also doing one but um, but our, I think our main character is actually from the culture whereas the other girl is not and so she is kind of mad about that and then I think it they end up liking each other. That was a terrible synopsis. I will read it and then I will know. So now the next eight books are all books that I got for my birthday um, from my mom and dad. I got Heartstopper Volume 4. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this is about but it follows Nick and Charlie as they become friends and then it develops into something more and it's just really cute and wholesome. It is great. I have read this. It was five stars. Yeah. Um, so that was book number one I got for my birthday. Then I got The Golden Fool and Fool's Fate by Robin Hobb. I, I spoke about this series earlier when I book about Fool's Errand. This is the continuation to the Farseer trilogy. This is book two and this is book three in the Tawny Man trilogy. I'm very interested to see where the story will go. Books four and five, again another series, are The Poppy War and The Dragon Republic by Hour of Crime. So I have already read The Poppy War. I gave it four out of five stars. I did really enjoy it. I talked about it in my May wrap-up. And then The Dragon Republic I haven't read yet. I'm very excited to get to it. In this series we follow Rin who is an orphan and her foster parents kind of arrange a marriage for her and she does not want to get married at all uh, and so she takes this test that is open for everyone to take uh, but she, most people doubt her because she is an orphan she isn't really well educated or whatever and she wants so badly to escape the life that she's living and so she studies so hard for this and she gets one of the top scores which lets her go to Sangard Military Academy which is free and so that means she can go uh, but that is actually only the beginnings of her travel because war is coming and people are not very nice to her at this school. Books number six and seven I got for my birthday are Furyborn and Kingsbane by Claire Legrand. I was supposed to read Furyborn in June. I don't think I'm gonna get to it. Well, I still don't really know what this is about. I've heard great things about it from Mary Reads and from Rowan from A Wandering Through Worlds. I think we follow two women in two different timelines and there is a prophecy that involves both of them. Uh, one of them will like destroy the world and the other will save it or something like that. I am not sure but as I said I have heard really great things about it so I'm interested to try it. Then the eighth and final book that I got for my birthday was The Emperor of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. So this is actually a pre-order because it didn't come out till the 27th of May, uh, this paperback copy which look how thick it is. It is huge and I have already read this. I will be talking about it in my June wrap-up but I love this so much. It was brilliant and yeah it was a five star. Uh, an incredible finale. So this series follows Nari who is a con woman in 18th century Cairo and one day while she was is running one of her cons she accidentally summons a Jin warrior and then this Jin warrior tells her that you know she has to have some Jin powers to be able to do this and then takes her to Devabad which is the city of Brass and from there her life gets tangled in all of these politics and powers and she has to try and find a way to survive and as I said this finale was brilliant so that was the final book I got for my birthday. And so then the last thing that I'm going to show you before I go is actually a whole set and I'll show you the items with it as well. So I back in January I ordered the Illumicrate uh, Infernal Devices box because I don't talk about it too much I feel like not as much as I should. The Infernal Devices is my favorite series of all time. Uh, it has a very special place in my heart. It is filled with nostalgia for me and so I bought their beautiful set and I'll just show you the items while I'm here as well. So it had this book tin in it which was way bigger than I expected it to be. Um, it's very beautiful. Uh, it says the Shadowhunter Codex on it and then on the side 
and the back it says the indispensable guide for all young shadow hunters property of the london institute and yeah i have all my bookmarks in here then also in it came a herondale uh pin it is i don't have like a pin collection or anything but it is beautiful like it is so stunning i just have them all displayed way up there <laughs> and also came these little figurines so we have Jim, we have tessa and we have will who uh who i may have dropped while i was taking this down and his feet might have fallen off and so i have super glued him back together this is why you don't put things that are breakable on the top shelf whoops the best thing of all in that box the books themselves are gorgeous like look at these <laughs> they're beautiful so they come in this box which is like which is actually like a good sturdy box as well and so even like the box is beautiful like it has this beautiful gold foiling and it says different pearl devices and then it says love is the most dangerous magic ball and then it has again on the side the different pearl devices big center care and it will take the books out and um, they're actually not as difficult to take out as i thought they would be <laughs> so this dark blue is clockwork angel they are done in the style of the 10th anniversary editions but these are actually smaller than this 10th anniversary editions these are standard uk hardback sizes whereas i think the 10th anniversary editions are more like us hardback size so they're like slightly they are like bigger so again just some beautiful foiling and uh then on the back it has a quote that says this is your true self tessa this power is who you are and then we have these beautiful stenciled edges of like cogs and stuff because that is kind of a thing in these books and then again beautiful sprayed edges um even though i do find it weird they didn't put like most of the like really quotable lines yeah so i was kind of surprised they put ones that i feel like aren't as popular quotes the second one yeah that one which is we live and breathe words um so yeah i was like a bit confused why they didn't put like i don't know some of the more well-known quotes on them but like i'm not mad about it i think my favorite one is the purple clockwork princess i was actually really surprised i thought that these would be way darker than they are and even on camera they are showing up pretty dark but it's actually like a pretty bright purple there the light kind of caught it more that way like it's pretty bright yeah again beautiful purple spray edges and then it says in your eyes alone i found grace so yeah um absolutely beautiful when I originally like bought these, I was like planning on like putting like one facing outwards and like one where the sprayed edges would be outside and then one where the spine would be. But then like I was like, this box is beautiful. I want to put them in the box. <laughs> so they're staying in the box. So that brings us to the end of this book haul. I'm pretty sure I will probably be back with another one in September because there's some more Robin Hot books that I'm gonna buy and there's also I'm also gonna be getting my with shadow book and i'm going to be having those uh those copies of the gathering of shadows and conjuring of light so i will probably have enough books to film a book call in september uh but as i said we will see so those are the 19 books that i got so far this year i am not gonna try and pick these books up because a lot of them are very chunky like very few of them are small <laughs> oh my god I'm not gonna be able to get them all in frame. Okay, that's not happening. We're not doing that. <laughs> that is all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Bye.